Welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. I'm Kay Murray, joined in the studio by Shaka Hislop. And what a night of Europa League action it was. We will be hearing a little later on from Archie Rintot, who was at the camp now to see the surprise result with Eintracht Frankfurt knocking Barcelona out of the competition. 3-2 on the night, 4-3 on aggregate. Two goals from Philippe Kostic, an incredible strike from Rafael Boré. Two goals back on the board for Barcelona from Busquets and a penalty from Depay, but not enough. And one of the biggest surprises of the season so far, Barcelona out at the quarter-final stage of the Europa League, as we now welcome in some more to our panel to talk about everything that we saw. Frank Lavoff, Luis Garcia and Jules Laron. And I'd like to start with you, Luis. What happened to Barcelona? They were favourites to win this competition. Okay, why with me? I mean, you got a, two or three <laughs> fantastic uh, pundits here to analyze. <laughs> uh, well, I think everything started from the very beginning, where Barcelona uh, found that uh, Inter Frankfurt didn't go there just to waste time and to wait to see what they were going to do on the game. They knew they were going to be dominant, but they didn't change much what the plan was in the first game. They start pressing from the first minute in the last third of Barcelona and not allowed them to to build up uh, easily and. Well, they found uh, that penalty that we can see. We can talk about if it's, well, it was a, a soft one or not. It was a penalty. It was grabbed by, from behind by Eric Garcia. It was a mistake from him because I think there was no much uh, hurt over there with uh, with the player. But at the end, you start the, from the very beginning with a penalty against you, and you need to do. Um, even more than you, you did in the first uh, game, in the second half of the first game, uh, with a team that is ready to play like this. The plan of uh, Inter Frankfurt was to be well organized, to press in the wide area, not allow them to uh, Dembele or Ferran Torres to get the ball, and then those quick counter attacks. And well, they they did it in an amazing, fantastic way, and I think they deserve uh, to go through because today they they prove. That is a team that is very disciplined, is well organized, is determined to go forward, and at the end they got players who can finish the game, like we've seen with Borreo causing in the left side. Were you shocked with what you saw in the game, Frank? Uh, well, I was shocked by the the way Antrid Frankfurt played. Uh, I wasn't ex I wasn't expected that fantastic game that they they showed us uh, today. They were absolutely perfect, and I said, Luis, from the first minute to the last, uh, the last one, and uh, and they they showed to the world that they deserve to be in the semi-final, that they could cope with the the new Barcelona. Uh, I, I think I think it's not the best of the best of Barcelona, but they were on the way back to their 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 prime, I would say, and Antwerp Frankfurt found a, found a way to to stop them, and. They were the king of, uh, of the new camp today. They did absolutely what they had to do by the pressing that they, 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 they had, by the tactical option of the coach. They did everything to make sure they're going to win that game. And even if Barcelona, sco Barcelona scored two goals at the end, and there is a doubtful penalty even for, for Barcelona at the end, uh, there is no way that I I I've seen Barcelona coming back and being able to, to, to go through. Frankfurt... Today, tonight, was much better than Barcelona. Uh, we've asked our other Frenchman, Jules, to put his L'Equipe hat on and be very miserly with his player rankings. As you know, L'Equipe are famously very well known <laughs> for their very stingy player rankings. Jules, talk oh us through God. yours for Barca tonight. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's not good reading if you're a Barcelona player, Barcelona fan. They, 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 they are really, really low. They are out of 10, of course. They've taken, still, I think, made five or six saves, some really good ones, because otherwise the humiliation could have been even bigger. I mean, Mingesa, right back, the two centre backs. One, Eric Garcia, you can't make a mistake like this so early on by giving away that penalty. That was that was rugby, that was not football. And for Arojo, why not closing down Santos Bore earlier? And he, he goes down, he goes back and back and back, and then it's a wonderful strike by the Colombian. But surely Arojo should have defended better. Atualba and Busquets, especially with the goal, but were the better players. We didn't see enough of Pedri while he was on the pitch. Gavi tried, uh, especially in the second half towards the end, to have an impact on the game. Obama Young, I mean, that miss on the Dembele cross in the six yard box is maybe also the difference tonight. If he scores that chance, and it's a huge chance, then the rest of the game is maybe very different. So, not enough for Ferran Torres and Dembele, I think at times made the wrong calls, but this was a really poor performance from Barcelona, one of the worst since 
since Xavi arrived, really, and we saw them struggling at home against Galatasaray in the previous round, against Napoli in the one before where they couldn't win. It was two draws. But for them to play so badly, uh, it, was, it was a big surprise tonight. Luis, what do you think of Jules's player rankings? <laughs> <laughs> I have to talk to Pete. Uh, when he asks me things, I know he's going to throw them on the show, but it's fine for that. <laughs> uh, I, I, th I, I understand. I agree with him. I agree with him that uh, he's not the best performance of Barcelona. I understand that some of the players didn't give uh, what they can or they deliver. But I'm surprised with Araujo um, because if you have a mistake with Araujo, great. When you have a mistake, it's fine. But uh, overall, you cannot give a three to a player who have gave 100%, who have gave everything, who has created chances, who have been fantastic at the back, helping Garcia, they probably didn't have the best game, or Mingueza, that didn't have the connection because Mingueza have been, hasn't been played for maybe two or three months. And I'm surprised as well with Dembele. He was the key player for Barcelona tonight. From the first minute, he was trying to fight. He, the players weren't giving the ball as quick as he was expecting. He was very dangerous on the, on the right side, very dangerous on the left side. And have a five, just enough to go through to this game. I think that we could maybe put the other ones. Okay, I understand that they were, the, the, it, it was not the best game. But even Sergio Busquets, that he was fantastic in the middle of the park. He scored a goal. What else can he, what, what else has he have to do? To get a better, Julian, just tell me. He needs to score three goals from the middle of the park. He has to defend better. He has to pass better to get only a six. I'm surprised. I think that overall, the team didn't play well. But the grades of a couple of three plays, I think, could be a little bit better. That's my opinion. Jules? I just think that, you know, for 95 minutes, they were 3-0 down. So I think there's a point where, even if Busquets play well, if you 3 nil down for most of the game, you can't. You can't expect a 7 out of 10 or an 8 out of 10. For Arojo, I understand what you're saying. There's that big chance that he missed that, that the ball then ricochets on Busquets, who scores but was offside. I think if Arojo scores that goal again, a bit like the Obama young one, it's a different. the end of the game is very, very different. And for me, this is a big miss for Arojo. I know he's not used to be in that position and to scoring goals, but even, even a centre-back with his, with his, at this level, with his talent, he should have taken that chance and score. Maybe the rest is different. That's why it's a three as well. Uh, listen, I, on, on one hand, I, I agree with Luis on a, on a couple of points. I think Araujo uh, uh, maybe deserves a little bit more uh, border strike. You, you, somebody shapes up to shoot from, from that distance more times than not, especially if you have somebody like Ter Stegen behind you, you, you invite that. Uh, and while I think uh, Torres and Dembele could have had better, better scores from, from Jules, I, I think he was kind to Aubameyang and Garcia. In, 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 even at threes, as, as, as the worst players in the park, I, I thought Jules was, was very kind to them. Goals shaped this game. And for Garcia to give away as cheap a penalty as he did as early on as, as he did, uh, I, I thought that was defining on, on how this, this game went. Now, you wondered if it was that early in the game that... Oh, too early, as the cliche goes, against Barcelona. And, and while I, I thought Torres was good, I thought Dembele was, was very good. Um, I thought Eintracht Frankfurt played them well in that. Didn't allow Dembele to come inside too much. He got down, got down, got down the wings on occasion. And every time he got the ball across, I thought Obama Yang um, was not to be seen. Jules mentioned one chance that, that he missed, that, that was, was a sitter by, by, anybody's, by any, anybody's measure. Even at 1-0, there was a header that I thought he mistimed his jump with from a Dembele cross that I, I expected a whole lot from more, uh, a whole lot from him, um, a whole lot more from him. And had that found the back of the net, um, had Trap at least been tested, I think you'd have seen Barcelona rise. But for 90 minutes, I, I don't remember an awful lot that Trap had to do. And as a result, Barca find them for themselves out deservedly. Frank, what do you think of uh, the rankings? From Jules, do you think Lakeep would be proud of them? <laughs> I think it was very kind of them because at 3 0, you can put a zero for everybody, you know, because when you <laughs> play at home at the new camp and you have to win and you are 3 0, uh, 3 0 down, you know, uh, you don't deserve any point. But, you know, that ranking, I've been uh, suffering from that ranking when I play in France from L'Equipe. 
And I remember that in the year 2000, they decided to put half points, you know. I don't know what that, what that came from. <laughs> I guess when you had the, 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 the good gears, when you, you put the socks in the right position, maybe they give you half points more than the others, you know. That's, uh, <laughs> that's nonsense because it's hard for only one guy to judge 22, other, 22 players and to know exactly what they've done. Like, for example, the, the runs without the ball and everything, the movement, the tactic and everything is very hard. Uh, so it's not fair to the journalists, but it's, uh, it's not fair for the players. But today, <laughs> Barcelona players don't deserve much more than one point or two points, let's say, to be nice. Well, <laughs> the semi-finals are now set. It will be Frankfurt taking on West Ham. A big win for West Ham on the night as well. 3-0 it finished to them with goals from Dawson, Rice and Bowen. Leipzig knocked Atalanta out. A big night again for Christopher and Kunku. And meanwhile, Rangers beat Braga. Let's get some more reaction from the camp now then, shall we? Because Archie in Tut was actually there for this big night for Eintracht Frankfurt and the bad night for Barcelona. Archie, I want to start by asking about what Xavi said afterwards in the post-match presser about the fans in the stadium. He feels as though there must have been some type of miscalculation on Barcelona's part because it felt like a final, he said, with the stadium divided half and half. What was it like? From a German football perspective and somebody who knows what these fans are like, not surprising. They will travel in numbers and they're serious about that. 30,000 Eintracht Frankfurt fans, by all calculations, were here in the stadium. Barcelona only have themselves to blame. Who was selling the tickets? Uh, at very extortionate prices, I should add, as well to the Frankfurt fans. It was Barcelona. So if Xavi is disappointed about that, then he needs to be looking within his own hierarchy because that's their fault. Archie, can you put into context what this actually means for Eintracht Frankfurt? Oh, one of the greatest nights in their history. I, I, I don't think you'd be able to, to get Jan Agafjortoft on right now because he will just be lying on the floor with, <laughs> with what's actually just happened. If, not, if, if he's not already launched himself up into space. That was <laughs> something that nobody could have seen coming. Everybody thought, from a Frankfurt perspective, it's going to be tough, but ultimately... Barcelona's quality will show through. But if anything, this was the spirit of Villarreal from Eintracht Frankfurt. They've been labelled before as the German Atletico Madrid, but they were creating so many chances. They could have been four or five nil up at the camp now. And this is a team, just for context, who at the start of the season had to change their sporting director and their coach to the most important positions in a club in German football, but in any club. And they got in the coach, Oliver Glasner, who turned down the chance to be coaching Champions League football at Wolfsburg and left. The Frankfurt fans were annoyed at the fact they'd missed out on the Champions League at the end of last season. And then they have this magical night in Barcelona. It's taken half an hour for the players to eventually go into the dressing room and stop celebrating with the fans. The PA announcer in the stadium has been pleading with the Frankfurt fans to go home. But... I'm not sure the, uh, the people who are running the bars in, in Barcelona, well, they'll, they'll, they'll turn a profit tonight, I can tell you that for free. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that they'll be wanting, <laughs> wanting as many clients as they're going to get because I tell you what, the beers are going to be flowing in Catalonia tonight and, and how. This was a famous night for Eintracht Frankfurt. Philip Kostic, that guy has, 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 come, up, has come up tops for, has come up trumps for, I tracked Frankfurt before, but on this kind of stage as well, that was some performance. Oh, it absolutely was. Well, seeing as though that's what's happening tonight in Barcelona, we won't keep you. We'll let you go and enjoy the celebrations with the Frankfurt fans, and we'll see you again soon, Archie. OK, thank you. All the best. There we are. 3 2 finishes to Eintracht Frankfurt on the night. 4 3 on aggregate. Just to let you know what Xavi actually said, he said the atmosphere didn't help the team. It seemed like a final with divided fans half and half. The club is checking what has happened. It has been a miscalculation on our part. What do you think of him saying that, Luis, and what you saw in the stadium in the camp now? 
Yes, the COVID is, is surprising, but we are talking about Easter time. Loads and loads of people from Barcelona is been going away on holiday. And of course, uh, I understand that Barcelona just opened the gates to everybody who wants to come in. And of course, there's a lot of tourists. Barcelona is a very touristic place, so there was a lot of people coming to visit the city. So you go there and watch the Camp Nou, and you got a game to, go, to watch it, so off you go. But they didn't calculate it that the Inter Frankfurt fans were coming in waves. And we've seen uh, the, oh, so much people walking on the streets, control. I think they behaved very well. And they were going to try to see if they got a, a ticket. And of course, Barcelona was selling the ticket. So we finally uh, got uh, play, uh, support from Inter Frankfurt all around the Camp Nou. Normally, they, are, they got a, 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 a special place where you can, I think they can get uh, between five, uh, three and 5,000 people in one of the corners, but Camp Nou is around 95,000, so that is okay. But in the moment that you see uh, white shirts all around the stadium, people start not being happy. That's why sometimes we saw tonight uh, in one of the stands, people going away for uh, around 10 minutes to complain to Barcelona why they were surrounded by anti uh, Frankfurt supporters. So I understand what Xavi's uh, intentions are. I think that doesn't change what the team uh, performance was tonight, but definitely it was something to, that adds at uh, the bad performance. When you don't have your supporters behind you, it's not something good when you played at home. Jules, is it true that you heard Xavi's comments and actually lowered your rating for him for the player and coach <laughs> ratings? No, no, not just for that. I just think Barca should have won, even if, if even if they'd been 90,000 90, entering Frankfurt fans in that stadium. They were, they are the better team. They are a better team. They are better players than Frankfurt. This is not where they lost this tie. Not because 30,000 German fans turned up at the game, and because clearly socios, Barcelona socios, sold them some of their tickets because the club clearly let them bought let them, sorry, buy more tickets than the allocation that they initially gave for away fans. Like Luis rightly said, you've got an away end on purpose. But tonight, they were all around the stadium, not just in their away end allocation. So this is, the, but this should not be an excuse for why Barca lost the game tonight and why Barca was so poor for most of the game. This is not an excuse. And I was just, I was just a bit disappointed but Xavi pointing out the, 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 the fact that there were so many German fans in the stadium because, let's not forget, the previous round, they did the same in Sevilla against Betis. So surely Barcelona should have known this is what happened with Frankfurt. They do that every time, every season. Remember Frank a few years ago in Bordeaux? They brought 20,000 fans in Bordeaux. And this is what they do. So Barca should have known, should have been warned before and should have handled that very, very differently maybe than what they did. Yeah, and then another big point for Barcelona on the night, obviously losing the game and losing Pedri as well, Luis. Not good to see him coming off, and we hope it's not a bad one. Yes, Kay, but even though if it's not a bad one, it's not going to be good news for Barcelona because we all know the, how important he is. You could see that from the very beginning of the game, he wasn't getting involved. He was getting receiving the ball. He was moving in, in one small area, so we can think that he wasn't feeling 100%. But in the moment he had his hand um, grabbing his, um, his uh, uh, hamstring, that's something that is not good. Even though that he hasn't pulled or tore his uh, hamstring, it's going to be... A, a, a couple of three weeks at least. And then if we are talking three weeks to get ready, we are talking about a season over for him. Barcelona is not going to be involved in the Europa League. He's going to be fighting to try to get closer to Real Madrid, even though that probably La Liga is already over. So most important, and I think, is to keep safe Medri, Med, uh, Pedri and keep it uh, clean for, ne for next season. And at the end, this is Pedri probably saying goodbye to this season. Oh, don't like to see that at all, especially with what we've seen. He's been lighting it up for Barcelona this season. These are the odds to win the Europa League now, just taking a look. And um, I'm sure you'd like to hammer home who <laughs> you're hoping to see win, Shaka. Look, I'm, I'm just enjoying this ride for West Ham as much as, as, much as any West Ham fan, in, in, a, in a sense of disbelief. Good result against, against Lyon, 3-0, uh, in, in a game that I, I thought, up until the Declan Rice goal, just moments before half-time, Leon were by far the better of the two teams, even at 1-0. I, I did not see how, how West Ham were going to go on and, and close it out. Then that goal and, and, and the second half was, was much improved and, and easy for West Ham. Um, Leipzig have, have had a tough run themselves, well done well against Atalanta, who we've sung their praises over, over the last couple of seasons, so you understand why they're, they're favourites. And as good as Eintracht Frankfurt were, um, I, I, I'm a little bit surprised to see them below West Ham. Given that you get the better Barcelona as you do, 
I just thought as you go into this one, given West Ham's performance against Lyon and Frankfurt's performance against Barca, they may be, may be a little bit higher. But that, that's a very tough tie to call uh, between those two. And then we see what Rangers have to offer at this stage of the competition as well. So it's especially given what's at stake in terms of a Champions League berth, it, it's really, really interesting. Jules, are you a favourite here? I think Leipzig have to be favourite. Uh, the way they, they went to Bergamo tonight, at, this afternoon against Atalanta, and the performance that they put on uh, was fantastic. Domenico Tedesco has done an incredible job, really, since coming on and replacing JC Marsh. At that club, he's got as many points in the Bundesliga than, than Jürgen Nagelsmann, for example, and in Europe. For a team that obviously dropped out of the Champions League, and not forget they were in a very tough group with PSG and Manchester City, they've done so well in this competition. Now they are the favourite. Let's see how they handle this, this title of favourites. But it's going to be, obviously, semi-final and final now. It's going to be, it's going to be tough for them. But, but I think they should, they should, they should, they should be the favourite for everybody. Anything is, is possible now. We saw that with Frankfurt. West Ham, to a certain extent, Rangers as well after the Dortmund win, etc., etc. But for me, Leipzig have to be the slight favourite. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and of course, ESPN FC seven days a week, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.